All right, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is after one. We have a quorum. This is our full committee hearing on uh, ways and means um, for this nice Friday afternoon. As we start, I'm going to take a, a moment of personal privilege and just um, and um, uh, apologize first to our committee members and then those of you in the audience that may have participated uh, yesterday afternoon. We got off the floor late and started about uh, two hours late on our subcommittee hearings. Uh, we had a dozen bills uh, on that agenda and tried to place an eight additional for tentative uh, review. Obviously, those other eight we didn't even get a chance to get started on. Um, that was my fault for setting that agenda that way and, and, um, and having a very um, compressed time frame to try to do these measures that are important to you and important to our members. Um, and we didn't do as well as we should have on that. We'll do better going forward. Um, for those of you that aren't aware, we had 82 um, bills dropped into our committee this year. Um, a third of those, 27 of those bills, were dropped um, from February 22nd until today. So um, th th what the work we do here at this committee is important to all Georgians, and we need to, we need to get it right and we need to take the time to do that. In our hurry yesterday, uh, there were some members of the committee that didn't have as much opportunity to review the bills as they were comfortable. There were some people that went, were there to testify that uh, through no intentional, uh, we were moving so quick, didn't uh, allow everybody an opportunity uh, to be heard, and, and that certainly is never um, our intent. Uh, so what I'm going to do today as we begin our meeting is I'm going I'm to take four bills uh, off our calendar this, a this afternoon and recommit them. Our intention is to have a subcommittee meeting on Monday to discuss these four bills. Um, if your bill has not made it through the process yet, please don't hear me as saying start calling and lobbying and texting and emailing me. Uh, I know the 87, 82 bills that are in the committee. and um, uh, this is this I'm not opening the door for a lot of new things but um, I'm going to recommit House Bill 378 which is LC 431293S this is uh, uh, Representative Williamson's uh, measure uh, dealing with a facilitator on um, rental ve vehicles I'm going to commit recommit House Bill 405 which is LC 431242ER uh, this is uh, Chairman Knight's um, issue dealing with a Freeport exemption uh, we're going to recommit House Bill 428. That is the bill that um, Chairman Workheiser is ca uh, carrying uh, that we're calling the Communication Services Tax. And we're also going to recommit House Bill 448, which is Chairman Dollar's bill, uh, again dealing with facilitators, in this case uh, lodging and accommodation facilitators. Again, our intention is to um, answer a few remaining questions and provide clarity on those four bills to give the members of the committee the opportunity to review them in further detail over the weekend, uh, to have them in committee, a subcommittee on Monday, uh, and then schedule a full committee on Tuesday. We have a work day next Wednesday, and those that come all the way through, and I think all four are certainly positive measures, will be available for Chairman Powell and Rules on crossover day. Um, so um, if, uh, if the committee will allow me uh, to do that without objection, we'll re recommit those four bills. Any question or comment with regard to that? Thank you. All right, we'll go on to our full uh, committee agenda today. Um, the first bill is House Bill 224, which is LC 431299S. Uh, this is authored by Chairman uh, Williamson, and as a reminder, it also includes House Bill 333 from uh, Chairman Corbett and House Bill 355 from Representative Perkle. Um, Representative Williamson, any comment with regard to House Bill 224? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Uh, it passed out a, a subcommittee yesterday unanimously, uh, House Bill 224, LC 431299S. And as the Chairman uh, Harold just mentioned, it is a combination of three bills, my original bill, House Bill 224, and the other two um, jobs tax credit bills. 
This is all about um, rural Georgia and protecting our uh, and, uh, protecting our businesses in rural Georgia and helping those uh, jobs grow where they're most uh, needed. Uh, this bill, on the, as far as I'm going to hit the highlights real quickly under the job tax credit section, the bill does two things. It adds an additional $500 per job credit and lowers the wage requirement for jobs created in Tier 1 and Tier 2 counties that qualify for one Georgia funding. Um, thereby, it's given an additional credit of 500, uh, I'm sorry, the target wage is reduced for 40, the 40 least developed counties, which also qualify for one Georgia funding. And this is populations of 50,000 or less and 10% or more of the population living in poverty. It goes down to 70% of the average wage earned in the county with the lowest average wage earned in Georgia. Uh, the theory being that a job is a job in some of these very depressed areas. Thank you, Mr. Williamson. Does any member have questions of Representative Williamson? Seeing none, those in favor of, uh, or is there a motion to move to pass? I have a motion by uh, Vice Chairman Carson and a second by Chairman Corbett to move House Bill 224 to rules. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, sir. Our next bill is House Bill 276, which is LC 431304S. And this is the uh, facilitator bill, just the, the pure facilitator bill, which captures the online platforms as under our uh, existing sales tax structure. Uh, it's a bill I uh, authored. We had two hearings and it's passed a full committee. Any questions with regard to House Bill 276? Seeing none, is there a motion? So moved. A motion by Mr. Williamson, a second by Ms. Be Beasley Teague. All those in favor of House Bill 276 moving on, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Our third item uh, this afternoon is House Bill 344, which is LC 431302S. Um, the caption is uh, slightly different on your sheet. This bill is authored by uh, Representative Ma Matthew Gamble. Matthew, are you here? If you just come to the podium, please, in case there's a question. This is um, a measure where we um, actually um, uh, stripped out uh, Mr. Gamble's initial legislation and inserted House Bill 313. You'll recall that bill was offered by uh, Representative Spencer Fry dealing with um, Avalorum Tax Credit for Habitat for Humanity. Um, both, um, as I understand, Representative Fry and Representative Gamble were uh, supportive of making this modification. Um, does any member have a question of Representative Gamble or, again, Representative Fry on the underlying measure? Hit, hit your button, please, sir. Blanking. There. I, I don't want to belabor the point here. It was probably covered in subcommittee. I couldn't be in them all. But is purely public charity a defined term, or is that the... The bill is structured in such a <clears throat> in such a way that the combination of issues, the, the public charity providing housing, no interest loans, and should the property be sold for any other purpose, there's a recapture of any abated Avalorum property taxes at the local level that um, we believe it's so narrowly drawn it uh, will uh, likely impact a single uh, entity. Uh, certainly if others wish to provide that service at, under the same yeah. scenario, they would be welcome to. I guess it was a, part, a serious question and a, and, and a, and a uh, shot at, at public in general. I was just wondering if you know anything is purely public. Ah, so. Thank you. Any other question for Representative Fry or Representative Gamble? Hearing none, is there a motion? I have a motion by Representative Smith. Is there a second? Second. second. Everybody seconded. Let's be, I'll pick uh, Representative Buckner for that second. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? And you're on the rule, sir. Um, the next item on our agenda will be House Bill 379, which is LC 431228ER. This is um, authored by Representative Beth Moore. Uh, again, this deals with um, uh, reporting requirements for our local government, so on SPLOS funds. It's uh, the same bill that passed uh, unanimously, I believe, last session out of this committee and off the House floor. Just didn't make it all the way through. Any member have questions? Uh, Representative Moore for House Bill 379. 
No questions moved to pass by Chairman Martin, seconded by good Bill Representative Williamson. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Then you are under rules. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is House Bill 406. This is LC 431286S. This is authored by Representative Williamson dealing with reporting requirements for uh, joint authorities to furnish certain information. Um, Representative Williamson, any comment on that bill? Very quickly, it uh, does not affect any tax. It's just reporting requirements for uh, joint development authorities when the multi county is involved. Any member have a question of Representative Williamson on House Bill 406? Seeing none, is there a motion with regard to that measure? A motion by Representative Corbett. Is there a second? Second by Representative Buckner. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? And you are on to rules. Our next item is House Bill 446. This is LC 431099, um, authored by Chairman David Knight, uh, dealing with uh, recapture of refundable tax credits in relation to Hurricane Michael. Chairman Knight, comments on 446. <coughs> Very quickly, Mr. Chairman, if uh, those remember we had the um, – uh, tax credits during our special session dealing with uh, the forestry credits. Uh, this general, uh, this uh, body wanted to make sure that those credits went to back to the folks who had the casualty losses were refundable. We ended up inadvertently putting also in some language about transferability. And so that is, we do not want to allow the transferability of a 100% refundable credit. That is not right, that's not good tax policy. So what this bill does is it simply says, it changes it such that only the person who experienced a casualty loss is eligible for the refundable credit. They can still transfer it, but when it is transferred, it, it is not refundable. It's like any other credit which must be used against tax liability. Any that's member have a question of Chairman Knight with regard to this measure? Hearing none, is there a motion? Wait, hold on one second. Uh, thank you, Mr. Beasley Pig. I'll come back to you, though. Um, Vice Chairman Carson. And Mr. Chairman, just out of abundance of caution, I need to recuse myself from this committee vote. It'll be noted. <coughs> Representative Beasley Teague, did you have a motion? Yes, I do. Move to pass by Representative Beasley Teague, second by Representative Williamson. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you, sir and ma'am. Uh, our final item on our agenda this afternoon is going to be House Bill 507. This is LC 289283S, and this is deals with um, Avalorum property taxes and the assessors uh, using uh, uh, the income approach. It's offered by Representative Mike Walensky. Uh, you'll recall last year, uh, Chairman Stevens, we passed a bill dealing with this, and there was a as is not unusual, our, some of our assessors interpreted it slightly differently. So, uh, Representative Walensky has solved our problem for us. Uh, Representative, you have any comment with regard to this bill? Any members have questions of uh, Representative Walensky on House Bill 507? Number 11. That's me. Oops, sorry. I wouldn't. I, I apologize. First time I'm hearing this. So, uh, does when it says voluntary, does does one filing uh, hotel motel type taxes would that be voluntarily submitting that information to the tax assessor? Oh, there you go. So, this specific bill has to do with obviously commercial real estate landlords. So the fix I made was changing the first sentence from utilized to considered. So what I adjusted was the first sentence. The second sentence you're talking about is the voluntary production of sales or expense income. So that's any commercial property landlord can do that. Well, voluntarily means that you've decided your choice on your own to hand it to them. So uh, it would be, yeah. So the landlord is voluntarily choosing to give that information, and this makes it, the bill last year made it where the real estate uh, tax assessor from the county has to consider that. 
So clearly you would volunteer it if it was in your advantage, the taxpayer's advantage, yes. Um, and number one, is that uh, Representative Beasley Teague? Yes, yes ma'am. That's okay, he, uh, he took. We helped him, okay, good. Any other question for Representative Walensky on House Bill 507? Seeing none, is there a motion? Move a move by uh, Leader Trammell, second by Representative Buckner. All those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? And you're on the rule, sir. Thank you. And again, thank you all for your patience and indulgence yesterday afternoon. We'll get better, and uh, we are adjourned. <laughs>